All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. Coming to you with a, another Torah portion. This is what, Jake? This is week 25. This is Tazav, which means command. And it's Leviticus 6 through 8, verse 36. All right, now this one's pretty short. It's just basically two chapters a little bit. Um, so it doesn't take us very long to get through this, but... Right. Um, Hopefully, uh, we give you some things to think about. And once again, we encourage you to read the text. Don't take our word for it. So, Jake, what is... Yeah, we this? could be wrong. That's right. We definitely could be wrong. So, what does uh, this start with here? Uh, so, this is about uh, keeping that fire burning continually. Uh, it's kind of where it, where it takes off. So, spiritually in our hearts, being priests... The fire of Yah is to burn continually, steadfastly doing the word of Yah. What do you think it means there, doing the word of Yah? Well, uh, you know, usually when I think of doing the word of Yah is, well, the first, the word has to be in my heart. Because hmm. that's usually how it says it in scripture. It says, the, the word will be in your heart so that you will do it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think of first. Um, and the word of Yah being... Uh, the Torah. Yeah. It's also the prophets. Yep. It's also the New Testament stuff. Yep. Quote, Very unquote. Good. So mm -hmm. having Messiah in your heart, right? Continually yep. walking as he walked. So that's the, that's kind of the goal. Yeah. Very good. Well, the fire was to never go out. And so we have to keep watch. And if you were to fall asleep, the high priest could sneak up on you like a thief in the night. So, Jake, have you ever heard this story about the thief in the night and the high priest? Uh, I have on this very channel. Oh, you have? Yes. 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 And we did use the Nacho Libre thing. Yeah, I think we did. Huh? Yeah. Exactly. So if you sure missed did. it, go back and watch that one also. Yeah. But what, tell, tell the story. So is this concept of, you know... Um, the, if you were high priest, you had to take turns, you know, staying up with the fire. You know, uh, just like in the old westerns, they like, you got to keep one eye open. We need <laughs> one guy to stay watch while the rest of us sleep. And you didn't want to be that guy that fell asleep. And uh, so th that concept was not new. You know, the priest had that same thing. They They had to stay up all night to make sure the fire stayed lit. And it was serious, you know, because of this commandment. You didn't want to be the guy that, oh, I let the fire go out. I yeah. mean, that, that would not be a good place to be. Right. And you definitely would not have your job anymore. And you might, you know, you know, you didn't want to find out if that meant you were dead. Right. So, um, so, so they had to so, stay up all night. So when this thief in the night sneaks up on the, on the priest that falls asleep on watch. What well, so, happened? so the high priest, you know, this, this responsibility fell on him. And uh, so he took it very seriously and he would have to check on this from time to time. And especially if there's a new, new kid on duty or, you know, or maybe an old guy and he would stroll through and if he found them asleep, he would have, uh, he would throw hot coals on their garment and it would basically catch on fire, and that's how they would wake up. And he would surprise them like a thief in the night. That's a fine how do you do. And they would uh, run out of the place uh, yelling and screaming, probably, and on fire. And, and eventually, the they might be naked by the time naked. they got to the end. And so uh, there's a lot of references about that. And so um, I do believe that I've borrowed that heavily from Monty Judah and uh, Lion and the Lamb Ministries, but... But you can find a lot of things about that online if you look it up. Well, eventually, right, when, once your clothes burn up, you're bearing the shame of your your sin of letting the fire go out. Yeah, everybody knew by then Yeah, that you can't hide it. Hey, why is that naked guy running <laughs> through camp? <laughs> you, oh. <laughs> you woke up the whole camp, and, okay. and especially all the Levites, they're like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. You know, he fell asleep. Oh, no. Again. Yeah. It's always the same guy. Yeah. Well, that Jerry. Every mm -hmm. time. Every time he's on duty. <laughs> so we got to keep watch. Um, we don't want to fall. We don't want to be found sleeping when our high priest comes again. Right. And I think another thing important about this keep the fire lit, keep the fire going thing is you see Paul talk about, you know, 
run the race hmm. to the end, right? And you yeah. see the it talks about the falling away at the end, uh, and you see it in. You know, we're doing a study through judges right now, but um, and you you're watching these guys just and they go and they go and they're they're on the right track and then right at the end you know they kind of mess things up and it's like that's it's important to run the race to the end it's keep that fire lit yeah. till the end you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then it's hard it's a, it's not easy it takes a lot of active just like it took a lot of active work to keep a fire going you know that means you know it wasn't just like they had to stare and watch the fire but they had to go get wood they had to poke it and mess with it and you know yeah. you know if you've ever kept a fire going it would you, be an easy job to fall asleep at yes yes it's not it's like watching paint dry kind yeah. of it's soothing it's warm yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of like easy. sin kind of dim mm-hmm. it's like it's interesting too cuz yeah so i've always heard uh uh I don't remember where I heard this before, but it was uh, that sin is like pee in your pants. At first, it's nice and warm mm-hmm. and comfortable because now you're not under all that pressure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then eventually it just gets mm. cold and sticky. That's gross. <laughs> I know, right? Do you have a lot of experience with this, do you? Not really, but okay. I but I could, uh, I mean, who doesn't, Matt? <laughs> Yes, bring so. back warm childhood memories for me. <laughs> yes. So at first... It's one right? way to warm up on a cold Pennsylvania morning. Exactly. At first, it's it's nice, and then eventually it's terrible. You, you see how terrible it really that decision was. Yes, yes, for sure. All right, well, moving on. Um, so in Revelation 6.15, you've got this other principle. 16.15. 16.15, yes. You're all about changing that. that to 6. Yeah, <laughs> about uh, keeping the fire burning in Romans 12, 1 through 2, is about living sacrifices. And, and this idea of our prayer and study like an offering to Yahuwah. Right. So we get a lot of, well, uh, if you're going to keep the Torah, keep the law, why, you know, you have to do the sacrifices and stuff like that. So what we'll find in Leviticus is that it's not common man offering sacrifices. There's specific people, specific places for these sacrifices to be done. And just like you're not a policeman, you don't go pulling everyone over when they break the law, right? Right. Um, same kind of deal here. Um, but we see in other places throughout scripture that, you know, our sacrifices and offerings are prayer and study, right? That's our, we're sacrificing our time to, and our desires to be more into what Yahweh wants Mm -hmm. than what we want. Right. And we're, uh, I also kind of look at the prayer part of it as, um, right. It talks about not bringing a, a blind sacrifice, um, and so I tell my kids, I say, you know, that means when you're praying, pay attention to what we're doing and be on the same page with us. Don't make your sacrifice of prayer this blind sacrifice where it's it doesn't mean anything, mm-hmm. you know, be there. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're not sacrificing anything. You're mm-hmm. just still having your own fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's going through the motions. Right. All right, so in 1 Corinthians 10, 14, don't mix the holy with the profane. And in Mark 12, 38 through 32, there's this concept of being a perpetual fire at all times, be a living sacrifice. So uh, what what did you take from that, especially there in Mark? Okay, so... uh... So for the Mark verse, I thought was kind of interesting. He's talking about, this is where he brings up uh, the two great commandments. Uh, but he he also, at the end of that little discussion there, he says in verse 32, he talks about, uh, you know, he prefers you to be that, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. And he prefers that to burnt sacrifices. Yeah. Um, so he prefers, just like he says in uh, 1 Samuel 15, 
Uh, he prefers obedience to sacrifice. He'd rather Saul had been obedient than to have to offer a sacrifice later for his disobedience. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I think uh, to me was a big deal about uh, coming to Torah was was follow, finding that in in my Christian walk, I was leaning so heavily on the sacrifice that I was neg- neglecting the obedience part, mm. right? So we have the sacrifice of Messiah, but are we are we going to lean on it as like, well, that's a given. I, I have that, so I don't have to be obedient because I have the sacrifice. He prefers obedience. You have the sacrifice to cover when you're when you fall. Um, is more the point he's trying to make there. Well, and in that scripture too, and you think about um, loving your neighbor. It is a sacrifice, you know, yeah. to love your neighbor. It's not something that is easy, and um, you know, it requires time, effort, and energy on your part to actively do that. Right. So, it's more than just giving lip service, saying, "No, I love you, man." I mean, it means you go, <laughs> you go help the neighbor, <laughs> and you get your hands dirty, and you, you know, you 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 share the burden with them, kind are, of thing. Are you trying to say that? being my friend is is a very hard sacrifice that you're making no no (laughs) uh it could be i would i wouldn't blame you for saying that oh go back real quick i just want to make a point on this first corinthians thing too this don't mix the holy with the profane oh yeah it's the same thing he says in in exodus and he where he talks about don't worship their gods the way you know don't worship yahweh the way that the egyptians worship their yeah, gods because in this in uh, the, that corinthian scripture is talking about idols yeah so this is a syncretism situation here this is a golden calf situation this is a christmas situation yeah so, and, and humankind really wants to do this for some reason right don't put your uh your sacrifice of unclean animals on the holy altar right mm. which is who, what's the temple now our, so bodies. our bodies so don't be putting don't be smearing that pig grease all over the temple mm. right yeah yeah that's a good point or it becomes the uh, desolation of the the temple all over again right with antiochus epiphanies yep but, exactly but it's your own hands yep so moving on, when the fire of God is lit in you, it burns away the excess and leaves ash behind. Cleaning out the ash is like grace. Ash is what was used in ancient soaps to make one clean. And I see a lot of people, if you watch a lot of homesteady kind of things, people are going back to the whole soaps made with ashes and lye and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So pretty uh, interesting <laughs> So, Jake, how is cleaning out the ash? I was going to ask you that. Grace. Why don't you explain it? I, I explained the other couple mm-hmm. verses. So, cleaning out the ash is like grace. Um, you know, remove it, it's taking it away. You know, that act of of um, of, of taking taking the impurity away, in essence. Right. The yeah. Rubbish, so when taking when out I first the trash. saw you, the, the, how you put this. I was like, well, it burns away and leaves ash behind. It's like, well, that's not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to leave a bunch of ash behind. It makes yeah. it manageable. Yeah. So you think about, you know, the purpose of burning. You know, why do we pile up a big pile of logs or whatever we're burning? You know, it makes it easy to manage. You know, it makes it go from six foot tall to, uh, you know, about one foot tall when you're done. Yeah. And uh, you can easily manage that. And uh, it's the same concept, you know, it, it, it makes it um, easy to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of this, you break everything down to its basis components. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah. And then, so you got some fancy yep. writing on this one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Hard to read. read the, the old linen <laughs> garments were used to make wicks for the menorah. Have you ever heard that concept before? I just recently heard this mm-hmm. comment, and, mm-hmm. but I hadn't heard it before, I don't think. Yeah. At least not that it stuck. Mm-hmm. But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So, 
And that's about uh, all there is uh, in this um, this week, uh, week twenty five. Anything else you want to add here, Jake? No, I think uh, I think we rambled on about that stuff quite okay. well, right? Yep, it's okay. only a couple of only a couple of chapters really there, uh, and so we encourage you to read it if you've never read it, and um, you know, uh, check it out yourself and. Um, if you're interested in this comment, please give us, uh, please comment below and give us like five shofars that would really shofars. make our day. Right. So a five shofar review <laughs> and uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, Google us for more information. And uh, that's about all I have to say. This is Matt and Jake signing off. <laughs>